Welcome to Athens City Council. Tonight is Monday, June 2nd, 2008. This <coughs> evening, City Council is meeting in regular session. It is on, on or about 7.30. We do have a quorum with six of seven members present. Uh, before us, we have a disposition of minutes from regular session held May 19th and special session held May 27th. Do we have a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor of uh, accepting the minutes? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes have been accepted. Under communication, um, Member Nisley, I believe you have something you wish to share. Yes. The uh, Governor Strickland's 21st Century Transportation Priorities Task Force is going to meet on Wednesday afternoon here in Athens. And this is uh, part of a series of uh, meetings that are taking place across the state. And it's to look at uh, particularly issues related to public transit. So they're seeking citizen input at that hearing. It's 4 to 8 p.m. in room 135 of Walter Hall. So any interested citizens, please come. Uh, there's also um, a website at which you can fill out a, um, uh, a survey. And so maybe we can get, I'll see if we can maybe get that listed on the city website. We'll try to do a link. That would be, I think that would be a help, so if you can't attend the meeting. But I think the kind of comments, uh, the more citizens that can come, the better. So we can get very input for Southeast Ohio. <laughs> oh, very. Are there any other communications anyone wishes to share? Reports and communications from other elected officials. Mayor Weil. Um, just two things I want to mention. Uh, the public hearing for the second public hearing for the CDBG, if you remember, um, we had the first one. The second one's going to be June 23rd, 7 o'clock here. <coughs> um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that the, uh, the uh, bids, there were no bids for the fire station repairs. Uh, we had a bid opening, I think, the 22nd, and uh, nobody showed up. <laughs> so we'll probably either, uh, I think we're going to do two things, either see if we can just put it to the, um, put it out for somebody who, is, who puts the bid together or rebid it and reevaluate what the cost is. So those are the only two things. Questions for the mayor? Member uh, Bang. Nancy. Um, mayor Weil, I was wondering if it's possible in the, um, at the end of the so-called fests, if we could have um, a street sweeper go up the streets they used to, I think, quite often, you mean especially for, like, on Mill, Mill Street. Yes, there was a tremendous amount of broken glass on the street, and somebody riding a bike or walking across the street. Mm. I mean, I think there, the glass was the first time I, the first time was on Palmer wasn't too bad as compared to yesterday, okay. and so I think um, that would be something that would be. I'd say five o'clock in the morning would be a really good time. Hmm. Well, playing music or something, like an ice cream truck or something? I don't know, maybe classical, a little Mozart. <laughs> was the broken glass closer than 18 inches from the curb? Do you know? Uh, no, it was all, I looked at that. It was all over the street. <laughs> okay, just asking. Anyway, that's just another thing that doesn't get enforced somewhat. <laughs> the 18 inches from the curb. Lots of blue and red cups also in the curb that somebody should have picked up. At 5 o'clock in the morning? No. No. This would have been at 9 or 9.30 when I went to the food pantry. So okay. Um, I went through at 12, and I noticed some mess, but not a lot. This I mean, was Sunday. Yeah. Sunday, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know that either of us have to go down and take care of it, but I think there might be somebody around that could. I was just checking to see what was left of Mill Street. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. If you can do it. Other comments for the mayor? Since, yes, Jim. Since we're on that subject, um, I've had the occasion the last month or so to drive up Court Street um, about 9 o'clock Saturday and Sunday mornings. Um, what, what's our schedule for cleaning the street after a weekend night? It, I don't know. So you want to know on Saturdays and Sundays when it's done? Yeah, what do we do? Because by noon it seems to be pretty good, but early in the morning it's... I know the schedule because I was just looking at the street sweep schedule this weekend, uh, mostly for the west side. I got a call from the west side. Um, and I think it does three times a week on Court Street, but I couldn't tell you which days they are. Okay. I'll check. Just wondering. Thank you. Other comments? Yes. Uh, yeah, just while we're on this topic um, of mm -hmm. positive, I've noticed that North Congress has been a lot cleaner the past uh, month or two. And I just want to commend you and the administration for 
um, seeing to that. And also, I noticed on Saturday night, um, it was probably around 11 p.m., but I was up on West State Street, and I noticed there were some students cleaning up their yard 11 p.m. on a Saturday before they went uptown. So, Amazing. so there are some changes, I think, in, in people's mentality about, okay. about litter. So. A couple things. I know the West Side Community Association got together and put a request form, litter request form, a hard copy. This is no different than the sector meetings used to have a request form. So there's a paper trail. The other thing is they're utilizing the uh, report litter form that's on the city website more often. Uh, their intention is they've actually adopted various streets to report it, not so much to clean it, but just say, okay, we need to do a series of reporting and concentrate on those streets. So they're getting organized at least on that side, and that one goes all the way to Congress for the most part. Any other questions? Ball Director Lang. Oh. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I do have one brief uh, issue, and it involves some good news good. regarding city income taxes. Uh, in my meeting with the city auditor this week, we uh, got to talking about uh, uh, tax delinquencies or folks that uh, should be filing for city income tax and are not. And uh, it came to my attention that at least for the last several years that the law director's office has not uh, been directly involved in uh, going after uh, some of this uh, money that's out there. And that, uh, so that's a, a, a policy that will be changing, and uh, at least as long as, uh, as I'm in office, that uh, we will be uh, actively going out to, uh, to recover some of that money that we're leaving on the table. Well, since we have to pay, go get those that should do. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Member Sands. Mr. President, I, need, I should go back to communications. I, yes. I have um, an issue. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the financial reports for April um, that are in the council office. And that I think was emailed to everyone? I don't know that. but <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So is that a motion? I, I made the motion, yes. Do a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The reports have been accepted. On to ordinances for third reading. Ordinance 6208, an ordinance amending Ordinance 04106, establishing a fee schedule for solid waste and recycling, Title V of the Athens City Code. This is introduced by all members. Member Bain. Mr. President, move adoption of 06208. 06208 is, um, do we have a second? Do we have a second? Yeah. Thanks, Debbie. Um, 06208 is an attempt to um, bridge the gap between what we need and what we have right now. I think um, almost everyone knows that the price of gasoline is extremely high. The price of diesel is even higher, and the solid waste district is suffering under the same constraints as we are. We also need to roll the contract um, because now we are working on a more equitable and fair uptown garbage collection fee structure. And so as a consequence of that, this is maybe only going to be six months, might be nine months, might be less, might be more. But um, we may have new higher fees for uptown. Um, who knows? But at some point, we're going to have a second ordinance that will um, come into play. I think right now the residential units have been subsidizing a good bit of other uh, activity in town, and I'd like to see that change. And so we still are very much a bargain with the, gar with the solid waste, um, with the garbage and recycling fees. But anyway, so we added a dollar to the base fee. And that's what's happening in 6208. We have a motion and a second to adopt Ordinance 6208. Is there further discussion? All those in favor of the ordinance? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 6308, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of a vehicle for the fire department. Member Coon. Mr. President, I move to adopt Ordinance 06308. A second. Um, this ordinance is to purchase an SUV for the fire department, and then um, Chief Troxel will move the current vehicle that he's driving to Station 2 to be used for towing to replace the old Jeep that they have out there. Further discussion? Member Gosney. Thank you. Um, I do not want to get into another protracted argument about vehicles, um, but, and I didn't speak up earlier because I was under the impression that this was necessary for towing capacity at the fire department, and I no longer believe that to be the case. Um, one reason is the fact that this vehicle is only there while the, while the fire chief is there because it's his take-home vehicle. Um, so it's there maybe 
eight hours a day, five days a week. So if we need emergency towing, if we need towing capacity in the event of an emergency, then that has to come from vehicles that are at the station more than eight hours a day. Um, I think that was the only real real convincing point to me that we needed to buy this large inefficient SUV that gets 12 miles a gallon. So I will be voting against this. I don't know what's going to happen with the vote here shortly, but that will be my vote. Further discussion, Member Bain. Um, Mr. President, a few weeks ago, Mr. the fire chief was here, and I appreciate his um, candor. When I asked him about this, he said he thought he kind of obfuscated. That was the only time I felt like he obfuscated in response to my questions. But in a certain sense, my, my basic assumption is still there that we have um, that we have a 14-year vehicle we're buying, and it's possibly the most inefficient time to buy a vehicle of this sort. Waiting two years might procure a better vehicle um, in, with respect to gas mileage. Waiting one year might do it. And I also did not know, and we all put our collective minds together, and we figure out there's a truck there that could potentially at least pull a trailer. I don't know about that. I didn't know about that, but I think I will vote against it, too. I'm a little bit jaundiced about the whole idea of such an expensive vehicle with such low gas mileage. It might be because I just filled my gas tank a couple times coming back and forth from Maryland and the hybrid gets 55 miles to the gallon and I don't know. <clears throat> and it probably could pull a trailer. I bet. If I'd had a trailer hitch. <laughs> Is there a further discussion? Let's have a show of hands. All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 63? Three. Those opposed? Oh, you. <laughs> Bill, go oh. for it. <laughs> the motion fails. Thank you. Ordinance 6408, an ordinance authorizing a variance for a minor lot split on Mulligan Road. Member Phillips. Move adoption of 06408. <laughs> Does anybody want to <laughs> <laughs> They're still stunned. <laughs> um, this ordinance is uh, for a variance for a minor lot split on Mulligan Road. Um, you do have the, the drawing of the area. The variance is because the um, width to depth ratio is, is one to, closer, to, I think, to one to eight. Mm -hmm. And um, it is very similar to other lots in the neighborhood. We had a question when we discussed this in committee about some deed language that had been drawn to our attention, and the law director informs me that that is not a problem um, for going ahead and allowing this lot split. Further discussion, Member Bain. Well, Mr. President uh, and Council Member Phillips, I'm a little concerned about the width of the lot, and I, we've not really, I mean, not that it would necessarily be different from the um, other units in the neighborhood, which are also on long, narrow, skinny lots up the, in that particular area. But I hope in the future, I will go along with this as it is today, given the texture of the neighborhood, that we would have um, a map that would have the dimensions on it, the sort that you would find on a plat. It would be much more informative and better for all of us to know that we aren't making a nuisance in a neighborhood. This one looks like it's right in keeping with the rest of the long, skinny lots. Long, skinny's good. <laughs> the only thing after Jim said that he had looked at it, I stopped and looked at that lot. I cannot believe it's buildable. Yeah. Well, I think about the driveway and the development. It is an abyss. It, remember, <laughs> Mayor Weil. Um, these were some of the discussion points um, when it came in front of the Planning Commission. One is that it does drop off pretty quickly. Um, and therefore, any building site would either it would have to cantilever over the back side of the hill, or um, or get a variance for uh, front setback. Uh, some of the other concerns um, voiced, I believe, uh, but not reflected in the minutes, were the the uh, curb cut there because it is a, kind of a blind curb there. Uh, if you look, the swale kind of comes up and down. Um, I think really what decided was the fact that the two adjacent lots were the same ratio. Mm -hmm even though a lot of the lot, lots the other side or not. Um, the vote, if I remember, was uh, three, four, and one against. So it wasn't a, a consensus in any means. Is there further discussion? Yes. I will mention that just um, to the, to the um, east, I guess, of 
<clears throat> of this lot. On the other side of the road, there's a house that the front is touching the ground and the, the rear right. isn't. So, yeah. I mean, it, it does happen in that neighborhood because it is a ridge. Um, well, and yeah. if this was in San Francisco, it would certainly be buildable, yeah. you know, so. It does seem to be relatively stable, except for the roads. Yeah. <laughs> the streets, yeah. I don't think that's well, but I'm not too sure uh, my comment is any reason to vote against this. You know, it's, it's just up to somebody who wants to build. Yeah, Paul. Um, I had concerns about it, but again, it came down to whether we're trying to um, build in terms of infill or sprawl, and that's really where I, I had, the considerations I had were what you're about, the width, the visibility of the road, and the, the setback limitations. But again, if we're, we're in general trying to say, okay, well, how do we, you know, rather than sprawl out, fill in, that's why I pretty much voted for it at the time. Good point. Uh, but that's just me, you know. Mm -hmm. Is there further discussion? All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 6408? Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. <clears throat> ordinance 6508, an ordinance amending the 2008 Appropriation Ordinance and authorizing an energy fund transfer. Member Sands. Mr. President, I move adoption of Ordinance 6508. Second. Um, as we talked about in, in committee, this ordinance has um, several actions that are that are happening here. Um, in section one, the first is <coughs> appropriating $100,000 to the general fund. Second action is $1,000 to the Ma Mansfield House Maintenance Fund. Mansfield House is the um, building that the Convention of Vis Visitors Bureau has for offices on the land of the community center. This house is one of the oldest houses in our area and was moved when the University Mall was built. And, and it's the city's responsibility to maintain it. So this is a minor amount of money for maintenance there. Um, this also moves $15,000 to the city enhancement fund to cover the cost of the city's paint program. Uh, paint program is um, low income um, homeowners can uh, get their house painted and some minor maintenance done to it use, utilizing this program. And if someone's interested in that program, they should contact the mayor's office. Um, okay, section two uh, actually decreases some appropriations. The first is 34,000 from the general fund, and that um, is a decrease allowed by the elimination of one code officer in, in the code office. Uh, <clears throat> then a decrease from the recreation fund of $6,700 and from the community center operations fund by $21,000. These two combined are a reduction in appropriation because we have not had a recreation director on site for the first half of the year. A director has been hired, so from now on that the remaining monies will be paid to him. And uh, the last reduction is $61,850 um, from the emergency shelter fund. This simply reflects the fact that the, the grant that Good Works Industries has been getting from um, Ohio Department of Development for the last several years and passing it through the city of Athens, it will now be awarded directly to them. The city will not be acting as a pass-through. Because that's been a general item in our original budget, we made that appropriation. We're decreasing the appropriation. And uh, finally, uh, this allows the uh, auditor's office to make an interfund transfer. That $100,000 that we moved to the general fund, uh, the auditor's office will move that into capital improvements fund, uh, $100,000 that will be set aside for purchase for, of a fire department ladder truck. Further discussion on Ordinance 65? Thank Member Bain. Thanks, Jim. And if um, we put aside 200000 every year, by the time we have to buy it, it'll, we'll have 600000 and we're looking for the other half of it, right? Yes, I wonder where we might find it. I wonder. Um, actually, I will just say that uh, not tonight, but in the next, the following weeks, we'll be talking about that other, that second $100,000. Right. Good. Further discussion? 
All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 6508? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 6608, an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to extend the current contract for solid waste management and ancillary services for one year and declaring an emergency. This is introduced by all members of council. Member Gosney, I believe. No? No, let him. <laughs> okay. I was thinking you were speaking to this one. I wasn't going to. <laughs> Do you mind taking this tonight? No, oh, I don't mind at all. I okay. move adoption Member of 06608. Second. Thank you. Um, 06608 is a temporary measure discussed or, or mentioned earlier, now discussed in a very skeletal way. Um, we have an existing solid waste contract. Um, prices of fuel are up. Um, prices of picking up unknown trash are also up. And so um, we authorized a renewed contract that will be used until such time as the um, repricing is accomplished and I, I must applaud the administration for moving forward on that and starting to to figure out what we can do to make the cost amongst this anyway the I'm talking about the old ordinance instead of this one this one simply rolls the um, <coughs> rolls the um, contract <coughs> with an additional amount of money to cover the increased cost of fuel cost of fuel further discussion all those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 66? Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 6708, an ordinance authorizing design engineering of the Grosvenor Street Slip. Member Nisley. Mr. President, I move adoption of 06708. Second. Second. Okay. This ordinance will pay, uh, authorize monies for the design of the engineer of the Grosvenor Street Slip Repair. That's a uh, slip that exists between Grosvenor and Franklin. And uh, this will allow the design for the repairs of that 253-foot slip. Further discussion? Member Bain. I was only supposed to say yes, I know. <laughs> but um, I would like to also thank um, the administration for moving this forward. Sooner rather than later, it's been two decades. I appreciate it. My first GIS project was actually on this slip. So 1988 was when it was done. So it's been a while. Is that when the city was still buying houses and tearing them down? Yes, that's when it was. That's what I was going on. Remember well, Member Weil. Member Weil. Mayor Weil. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it seems block. that way. Well, that's okay. Um, remember now, this is just for the engineering. We still don't know what it's going to cost when it's all... You know, when every, all the holes are dug, all the engineering is done. And, and, and the engineering holes. alone is? All, right now we're talking about 34 to start the preliminary yeah. part. Yeah. Well, um, but the next thing to discuss also is if we're going to do some design on this is to put a sidewalk on that side too. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. Yeah. Yes, um, Member Nisley. Yes, as I understand too, the design fee does and in, will involve the, the design firm also helping us when we do get to the bid process to make some recommendations and to review those bids that we receive. Yes. Member Bain. Uh, the only thing is, I hope they save the tree because it may be more critical in holding up that hill than. You know the one that's there, the poor things. The one holding up the curve. Holding up everything. <laughs> I wonder. Anyway, um, thank you again for doing this. It, we've repaired many slips in the intervening two decades, so it's time to do this one. Further discussion? All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 67? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 6808, an, an ordinance author. I'm sorry. An ordinance amending Ordinance 015107 authorized staffing levels and a non union pay scale for the fiscal year ending December 3108 and declaring an emergency. This is introduced by all members of council. Member Sands, are you speaking to this? I think so, Mr. President. I move adoption of Ordinance 6808. Second. Um, this is um, a proposal that um, we're making to increase the non-union pay scale in pay ranges one through six by $1,000 for all employees and also a $1,000 increase um, for those people in pay ranges seven and eight who were topped out, meaning they didn't get a raise because of their um, time in, um, in grade this past year. Uh, this would be effective July 1st of, of 2008 and would run through June 30th of 2009. I think our ordinance is just talking about 
this calendar year. Um, this time, this is a um, an attempt to address some concerns that our employees in the lower ranges have had, as well as some of the people who are topped out in the upper ranges. And during this time period, this one year time period, uh, council will review, um, <clears throat> revamp, and um, reorganize, if necessary, the current pay schedule to make a, a more permanent adjustment. Further discussion? Mayor Weil. Um, part of the other part of this is the staffing levels, and just to note that you have eliminated some positions. Uh, sometime we might want to come back and revisit this to, um, to either eliminate the assistant director for the recreation department slash community center with the idea of uh, replacing it with a, a program specialist, which would be a lower pay grade. But right now, I want to let everything shake out for the new director. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Sounds good to me. Okay. All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 6808? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. On to ordinances for second reading, 07008, an ordinance amending the Athens City Code, Title 39, Wellhead Protection Plan, and declaring an emergency. Member Gosney. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to um, consider this under suspension of the rules. Second. Sorry. Motion and second to consider Ordinance 7008 under suspension of council rules. The, the, reason the, reason, for suspension. the reason for suspension, and we talked about this at our meeting last week, um, is that this change to the water protection plan for the city will help protect the water supply in the case of a catastrophic spill or um, some type of accident of that nature. And it's necessary to get it into effect as soon as possible um, because there's a potential for expansion of, of these non-conforming facilities in the water protection area. And if we have this in place, it will provide us the most amount of protection. Further discussion on suspension of the rules only. All those in favor of suspending the rules on Ordinance 7008? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The rules have been suspended. Mr. President, I move adoption of 07008. Second. Um, this ordinance is um, addressing uh, problems that we have with the existing water protection plan considering secondary containment systems. So these are containments of um, amounts of, of regulated substances that could damage our water supply. Um, the way it exists right now, it's inadequate. It only uh, requires the containment of uh, the one container if you have multiple containers of regulated substance and this expands it to require and it sort of rewards it a little bit so that it requires the con secondary containment systems be able to contain 110 percent of all the regulated substance that's in that um, area and this is very narrow in scope it only applies to non-conforming facilities that want to expand um, so it's narrow in scope but it's extremely important to protect our water Further discussion on Ordinance 70. Member Bain. Mr. President, I just wanted to say that there are several other places that the Wellhead Protection Ordinance needs some tweaking, and we will be tweaking away at it maybe next time or at the time after. And Allah who knows that, but he has a real and present need to do this. Tweakers that we are. Yes, tweaks. <laughs> yes, Member Sands. Except these tweaks, I think, were recommended by um, members of our own staff who deal yes. with this. Mm -hmm. So um, right. we're, we're extremely pleased that they um, yes, saw this this, um, this need and, and came to the committee and to council to, to adjust that. The Wellhead Protection Committee themselves were the ones that recognized the need and brought it to us. So, okay. and, and there was unanimous support um, mm -hmm. with the Wellhead team that this change be made as soon as possible. Yes. Further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 7008? Aye. Those opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Announcements and other business? <clears throat> Any announcements? Committee meetings? Committee Member meetings. Sands. Mr. President, we talked at, at last um, week's meeting, kind of abbreviated committee, that several issues that we need to talk about finance next week. 
Very good. Well, I thought we were going to go on recess because we're all through. Everything is signed. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing left on our uh, uh, agendas. We better find something to put, or there's no reason to be. Remember, Ben. I was. Uh, I'm working on a, a map, and I was going to. I'm going to try and be ready. I'll tell Debbie by Friday if the utilities this time or the next time. Okay. My magic markers stay working. Member Phillips. I think. There was a desire when the chamber came and reported that we do a work session um, to continue to talk about some issues. So I can check with them and see if that's a good time, since it seems like there's not a lot on the agenda. But we'll see how it shapes up. Um, that's just a possibility. Very good. Other comments? Yes. Chris. I'd like to reserve time for the Transportation Committee to meet next week. Very good. OK. Mayor Weil. Um, a couple of questions. One is that there was discussion of having a wedding celebration, chapel, garden, Tour. field trip. Was that still on the books? Is that going to happen? <clears throat> I'd like to see how the AG comes out first, wouldn't you? The, the Attorney General's investigation of the of what of the <laughs> land transaction. That's the investigation that's really going on there. Well, if we, well. I was thinking, no, I meant for the land and the whole development. Oh, well, uh, how, okay, I guess you're going to point there. Oh, I see, you're talking about the, <laughs> the other crookedness part. The crookedness of the bid, perhaps. Um, <laughs> yeah, it could be turned into a retirement community set. Um, <laughs> we need another one. <laughs> the next question is getting the Halloween ordinances up and running. Um, it's about Never the time too early to, to talk about <laughs> Halloween, is it? Well, usually there's three. I know transportation has done in the past for street closure, but in terms of the other ones, maybe it should be in city services now. If they want to take it over. Um, but I, as I say, this is something to think about coming, starting up. I will give some good. thought as yeah. to who's going to sign that to. Okay. Just a heads up. Who do I want to assign that to? Okay. Any other announcements or other business? It doesn't seem like it's a An opportunity for citizens to speak on any legis yes, come on forward, Mr. Goldsberry, on any legislative items or city services that were not covered on tonight's agenda. You can state your name, Mr. Goldsberry, and your address. Thank you. Phil Goldsberry, Angel Ridge Road. I uh, just wanted to uh, say a couple of things. One, or I guess it's a question really. When, when you've talked about buying vehicles, this is not on the subject of Hebe, by the way. I'm not going to talk about that tonight. <laughs> when, you, uh, when you talked on the subject of buying vehicles, it struck me that at one meeting you were going to buy a Chevrolet and then you decide to buy a Ford. And I'm just wondering, don't you draw up specifications and put those out for a competitive bid and then in your specs you identify precisely what kind of vehicle you want and you maybe get a Ford, a Chrysler, or anything else anymore? Doesn't that work that way? Or I kind of think that this year um, the buying of vehicles kind of got away from us. Uh, I'm not too sure that the administration would even need to follow uh, mm -hmm. the recommendations, although the ordinance I think the last one did. Uh, council members have taken more of an interest this year in gas efficiency and that kind of thing than we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're absolutely correct. Okay. It's council's job to uh, do the funding legislation. It's the administration's job to um, uh, really purchase. I think we would have been better served if what council would do would be set up a policy of what we need to do as far as converting to uh, a fuel efficiency standard or something like that and then still allow the administration to choose uh, a vehicle that would best serve its needs. Mm -hmm. My recollection was that we used to you know, the council would authorize us to draw up specifications to accept competitive bids and to enter into a contract based You're upon an estimated correct. amount of cost. And we didn't know whether we are going to get Chevrolets or what we are going to get when we went down to the mayor's office to open up the bids. Maybe mm -hmm. you wouldn't get any bids at all. It was, looking, uh, was up to the specification you were looking for. So, yeah. Mr. Goldsberry, there is one difference, and that yeah. is the government contract purchase. Uh, oh, I see. So okay. that's the way you do it instead yeah, okay. of the other they way. They give you a pre-list of what all of is on their purchase list. And most of the police cars are covered because they're special editions. I see. Uh, and, yeah. some, and there's a deadline on that. But, anyway, but I later, think that we not miss our deadline yes. because of extended debate that went so on with that. So. The police want to go out on as a bid. It's yeah. going to be an RFP. 
I know we used to get in bad trouble if everybody didn't have a chance to bid. You know, they always oh, yeah. want to be marching mm -hmm. down there in great numbers to turn in their proposals. And, and we have in the past since yeah, I have okay. been hanging out in this room. So okay. I will be surprised if we don't hear from local yeah, uh, right. Uh, purveyors of automobiles. Yeah, I, I just we, want to clarify in my own mind whether things have changed. I know there's no, a, a figure that you don't have to, to that that you have a liberty to go up to a certain figure before you have to take competitive bids. I don't know what that is anymore, but it used to be something like five thousand, maybe even less than that. But oh, I, it's yeah. considerably yeah. more than that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the second thing I want to mention, having to do with slips, it seemed like that's all I ever did in the '70s was to fix slips. And one of the things that we used to do, if we could do it, was to simply drive steel vertically down into bedrock. And uh, if you got an emergency situation and you can do it, then you might find that you can save a good deal of money. Now, I don't know what Grosvenor looks like at all. I've not driven out there. I think that's where the slip is, isn't it? The one it, thing I remember about the Grosvenor slip that I heard quite a few years ago when we did another look at it was it's... 19 feet down before you hit bedrock. Is that right? So yeah. that's quite a while too, uh -huh. and that yeah. is where obviously I'm yeah. sure you're aware a lot of the clay came out that right. made the bricks on ours and many other streets around yeah. uh, the state, and yeah. so you've really got some clay soils yeah. in there that I that's guess a really way down to hold a long way too. down yeah. and yeah. a lot of yeah. moisture and a lot of springs in that yeah. hill. So yeah. Yeah, we used to do other things, you know, like gave in baskets with with stone in them that you had to excavate to get those in. So mm -hmm. I think it was a, a lucky place where we could drive steel, you know, yeah. money-wise. That's all I had to say this evening. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. Is there anyone else wishing to speak before council tonight? Seeing none, having addressed all items on our agenda, we are adjourned.